Yo, listen, Next.js is one of my favorite tools of all time, but one feature that people really like it for, which is their built-in API routes, I don't actually use a lot anymore. The API folder has its purpose, don't get me wrong, but there's a much nicer way to write your backend logic in Next.js that I found out like two or three weeks ago actually even works. So the oldest trick in the book to get your data in a React application would be to define an asynchronous function with a fetch handler that makes a request to your API with any method and then attach that function right here in a button, for example, as the onClick handler, right? So when we click this button, that's gonna make our request and get our data. What about the loading state, right? We need to keep track of the loading state separately. Is loading inside of something like state? Same for the error state. What about an error? If anything goes wrong during the await fetch, we need to save that in state as well to then show it to the user. The bottom line is fetching data like this just makes it way harder on yourself than it needs to be. And there are libraries that make it easier. For example, let's take React Query. Once we install that React Query, it makes data fetching in our project a lot easier, but it it has one very, very big drawback. So what React Query does, it basically gives us a hook and that is called use mutation. That is basically the same thing as a fetch handler, right? Inside of this use mutation coming from React Query, we can now define something called or mutation function. If you've never used it, it sounds fancy, but essentially you define any function to get your data inside of here. For example, once we mark this as asynchronous, we can await, fetch, and make our API call just the same. And now you're wondering, well, Josh, then where's the difference? Well, the difference is that the is loading or is pending, how it's named in React Query, same thing, or the is error property and retries and so on are all done by the library. But the big problem is that there is still no type safety. If we destructure the data, so whatever comes back from our fetch request, you're going to notice it is void or undefined. And of course, in part, that's because we're not actually returning something from the function. But once we do, how should React Query know whatever it is, the data, the shape of the data that we get back? It takes care of a lot of important stuff like error and loading states, but not of one of the most important things, which is full stack type safety. And that's where the way of fetching data comes in that I teased in the intro that I really, really like. And it's a combination of React Query and hear me out, something called server actions. Server actions are a feature that Next.js released a while back and I absolutely hate them, right? I do not like them. Look at this. This is how you're supposed to implement server actions according to Next.js, right? You have a server side function called create user right here from app actions. Let's give this a bit more space. And then you create like a form element that once you submit the form, the action gets triggered. And you know, the loading state maybe is inside of the state or the form action, nobody really knows. And in my opinion, this code is just incredibly convoluted and I refuse to use server actions in the way how it's intended by Next.js. However, if there wasn't something really good about them, I wouldn't be mentioning them to you in this video. So what's the deal? Here's the thing, right? Server actions, that is the beautiful thing, work flawlessly together with React Query. And that is the most important takeaway of this. Let's create a new file called actions.ts in, it doesn't matter where this file is, okay, anywhere. And as long as we specify use server at the very top of the file, we can export any asynchronous function. Let's call it get user, for example. And this will run on your server, right? Let's mark this as an asynchronous error function. And in here, you can actually interact with your backend, like make a database call, for example, and then return the user data. Let's just mock this. Let's just say the name is John, but this works perfectly fine to use your database right here instead of an API route. And now the beautiful thing is we can import this function on the client side and get full type safety instead of the fetch request to our API route. So check this out. We can pass in the get user instead of all the fetch logic we have before, simply import that from our actions file. And there is no error. It works just like this. Now the way in which we invoke this backend function in React Query, we can destructure something called mutate. Again, not the most intuitive name, but all the mutate does, let's call it, for example, server underscore get user, which is a convention that I have really grown to like, because now it's very clear that this happens on the server wherever you make the call in your JSX. And once we invoke this function in our JSX, you're going to see something really, really cool, because this is actually fully type safe across the stack. This is a backend function that that we're calling on the front end, right? And if we now accept any kind of parameters in this function get user, for example, let's say we wanted to accept a user ID and this user ID will be of type string that we expect right here. Then you're gonna notice once we switch back to the front end, 
wow, we're actually getting a TypeScript error. Expected one to two arguments, but got zero. This is completely type safe. We now expect a user ID wherever we call this backend RPC function that we now need to pass in from the front end. So this is pretty much just the body of a post request under the hood, but abstracted in such a way where we don't really know that. And I think that's awesome. So not only do we get full type safety of the data, right? Check this out, name string in the front end, right? Because that's what we return from or back end. Kind of like TRPC, if you know that tool, not only do we get type safety, but also all the loading and error states are, of course, handled by React Query, or I guess it's called is pending here, but it's the same thing as the loading state. And dude, how cool is that? And the thing is, we can also handle events like the um, on success, for example. Now, this is not specific to server actions at all, but we don't need to interact with server actions in the horrendously verbose way that Next.js actually intends us to. No, we don't even need to do that. We can simply handle the success event from the server action just in here in the on success and similarly if anything goes wrong we can do the same thing in the on error this is exactly how i've been writing my recent projects like the profanity api that i launched a couple weeks ago or what i mentioned in the intro this huge project this is how i do it and getting all the states while being type safe that's what i'm pointing out to you here is really nice so what are we thinking i think this is pretty cool and i've used it a lot in the last like two or three weeks. So when I say this is one of my favorite data fetching approaches, I mean it, dude. Like this is primarily what I'm using for my personal SaaS projects, what I did in the like big ass project that I launched here on YouTube like a week ago, this 12 hour video. That's how I fetch my data now, at least when I'm using Next.js, but I am using Next a lot and it's really nice. So let me know what you're thinking. I would love to hear your thoughts and then I'm gonna see you in the next video. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.